Hi everyone and welcome to another Goon Squad tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to rig models, 3D models, and turn them into um, mesh avatars for Second Life. And we're going to be talking about rigging them, um, models that are in the T-pose already and models that aren't in the T-pose because there are two separate things you need to do in order for it to work out properly. Also, just as a warning, my husband is over there playing Monster Hunter in the background. So if you hear any loud screaming, various clickings in the background, so laughing or straight up tables falling, that's him in the background. And I apologize in advance. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's begin the actual tutorial. <laughs> We're going to start off with our 3D model, which we already imported from Model Resource. Um, I'm working with a female Team Flare Grunt from Pokemon Y. But no, I got had the good one, Pokemon X. <laughs> and um, she, as you can see, she's already in the T-pose. So we don't need to do anything... Um, we don't really need to do anything to this model. So we're going to import um, the Avastar, which I already have on another layer, and line up the Avastar to the Team Flare model. So since it's already in the T-Pose, there's not really much lining up we have to do. More or less, just scale. I do, however, feel like I want to make her neck a little bit longer, the Avastar's neck. So that the, her head is inside the head of the team flare. So I'm going to click on the loops. Turn on the display everything. So you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click on the loops. Go over to the cube. Scroll down into the model sh avatar shapes. Go to, I think it's torso. And I'm going to increase her neck length. So let's see, neck, 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 neck thickness, neck length. And I'm going to stretch it up for it a little bit so that the neck is down here on the Team Flare neck and the head is up here inside the Team Flare head. So now we have everything lined up right. Let's go ahead and rig her um, to the skeleton. So I'm going to press A and deselect everything. Then we are going to... Actually, wait, first something I have to do first. I'm going to save this so you can follow along as well. Uh, team Flare. Go. Alright, there you go. Um, so everything's lined up. Everything's you selected. We're going to click on the, the Team Flare. Hold down Shift. Select the loops. Go over to Avastar. Open the panel wide. Scroll down. And then you see assign armature, and we're going to click it. So same all, just like we did with the other things. And as you see, they completed. We're going to click on the loops again, go into pose mode, and test out the rigging. So there's a little rigging issues here, but we'll have to weight paint to fix. But I showed you how to weight paint already in the other tutorial, so just make select the arm and make whatever is connected to the collar cold and there shouldn't be an issue. So that's modeling and T-pose and of course you know if that's all you need to just after you finish waiting we're going to export it so file export Avastar same old things checked and we're just export and then there you have it. Now let's say our avatar isn't in the T-pose, so we're going to move over to our non-T-pose model, which is down here, I think. And we have the Great Fairy, who is in this lazy T, not quite a Y pose, and her legs are spread apart more than our Team Flare model. If we were to use the same technique that we use with the Team Flare and just try to position it and then assign the armature you'll notice that the bones will snap and her arms will stay down here while the avastar arms will be up here and it will make a very messy rig so here's how to fix that so you don't run into that problem first we're going to position 
the Avastar and the Great Fairy pose. Since she's in the Lazy T pose, we're going to create the Lazy T pose with the Avastar. So select the loops and go into pose mode. Select the arm loop and press R and drag her arm down. Select the other arm and do the same thing. Look at it from above and make sure that both the arms are lined up properly. Oops. There was a mirror button to make you a symmetry button for this, but I forgot what it was. So if you remember, you can just do that too. So just make sure the arms are the same. And we're going to spread her legs a little bit to match up with them down here. Shut up! And I think I'm going to make her arms a little bit longer. So back over here into the avatar shape slider. Oh, oops, undo that. And uh, torso again. And this time we're going to make her arms a little bit longer. So that's where her thumb joint is at. So we have it all lined up. And we're going to have to rig it to the skeleton now. I think I may want to move the head up a little too as well. So before that, I'm just going to make her neck length a little bit. Mm, try to line up the noses as best I can. So I guess right there. Alright, so now that we have her in the Lazy T, or Avastar, in the Lazy T Great Fairy pose, we're going to go into object mode. Press A to deselect everything. Select the Great Fairy. Hold down the Shift key. Select the loops. Go over to the Avastar to the rigging and skinning. And this time we're going to check the Alter to Rest Pose button. And then assign the armature. Wait for it to set. And there it is. So now, oh, well, first, I'm going to go over here to this uh, data, this little person button, and hide the Avastar. So I'm going to click all the hide mesh. Okay. Get that out of the way. So now we're going to click on the loops, go into pose, and you see, she's now in the T pose and rigged like we wanted her to. Now, like before, you want to bend her around and check and see if you need to do any additional weighting, but as is, it's pretty good. So now with it in this default T-Post, you're free to export her out and import her into Second Line. So let's export her real quick. File, Export, Avastar, and we're going to name this one Great Fairy. No fairy. Normal because I did a lot of great fairies on here. And we're going into Second Life. So I'm still big zero from that last tutorial. Uh, and then port. I'm just going to close that real quick. Great fairy. Turn these down to zero, like before. Include skin weight. Because she's a normal and not a big, we don't need the joint position button check this time around. And import her in. Go into my inventory. Put on a great fairy. I think I may still have the old shape in from... Whoops. It's not good. I'm still all warped from when I had the, the giant tutorial. So it's hopefully my bones <laughs> deform, but it's uh, I may have to relog. Um hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to find my undeformer. Uh so I can get out of that weird shape from when I did the giant tutorial. Um so yeah. Here I am. Un gigantic unrigged I mean un, you know weird stretched out and I'm um, here's a great fairy with a spastic arm because like, of my AO <laughs>
<laughs> or lack of AO. Anyway, that's pretty much it. And that's how you rig your second life shape. And that's how you rig a mesh avatar into second life in the T pose and ones that's not in the T pose. Now, my warning to you do not go selling these avatars like you did some work. If you're going to import or sell avatars that you imported from other games or whatever, please sell them at least at a reasonable price because you know damn well you ain't make that avatar. And if you do decide to do that, then you know what we at the squad do. So, if you don't want us to visit you, price your stuff reasonably. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. I hope this helps you out in your projects. And like always, good luck and have fun. Bye.